Here we are once again at the vise. Let me pull this out without hitting the camera. Ugh. This is the brake shoes for the uh, 254 Chinese tractor. And what I did as an experiment, as you can see that this rivet is, is it's newer and it's a little larger in diameter. I forget what diameter the original is. It's, um, well, you know what, I don't have to guess. Here's the original. Uh, it's drilled out and removed. And it's about just a shade over four millimeters in diameter on the shank. And that's pretty standard for Chinese stuff. The brand new rivet is 964, so that's American an American standard and it's uh, you know 140 something thousandths. <clears throat> this particular one is um, it's a 3 8 diameter head so that's a little bit larger than the other one and it's a half inch long so I'm getting way ahead of myself here but it's part of the part of what I'm trying to show you guys so you can see this is fresh it's about the same length if that was fresh but this one's bigger in diameter um, the hole, the holes in here, for instance this one, um, the rivet, the new rivet um, folds over and fills the hole up very nicely. So what I did was I drilled this rivet out, or I ground this rivet out and um, put in a new one. Let's see if I can show you all the neat tools. I know you know what a, a drill bit looks like. This is the, um, this is the tool that peens over the top of the rivet or the you know the end of the open end of the rivet um, oops sorry the other thing is um, you need a bolt to pound on it with so what I did this is a 3 8 bolt and I don't know if you can see that but I ground the end dead flat um, and then you put that in here put the shoe on top and then pound it which I'll be showing you in, in immense detail at another time. What I'm trying to do right now is I'm going to grind all these rivets off. I'll demonstrate some of that. Okay, let's see if we can get this tight without... Okay, so the angle's a little funny. Sorry. Um, yeah, let me fix that. I need to raise that up a little more so it doesn't look so bad. Give me a second, I'll be right back. Okay, that looks better. You can see the rivets better. The angle's not so shallow, so what I'm gonna do is move the calipers out of the way, take the old Dremel tool. Um, I used a smaller stone before, um, and you just, you don't really wanna grind the rivet completely off, because then you scar up the, uh, the base metal. You can take it about 75% away and then knock it through with a punch which my punches have not arrived yet so we'll see how we get to that but grinding these off is kind of a big deal you want to do a nice job because you don't know how many times you're going to have to do these shoes Is that better? Well, I don't know if it really is or not. <sighs> you know, it's funny, these rivets are a lot harder than you'd think for being brass. So we'll leave that out of the way. Now I'm going to grab a, uh, a center punch, which is not the best option, but it's the only one I really have to knock that rivet through. Okay, so center punch, hammer. Let's see if we can start that through.
Oops, sorry. Sorry on two occasions. Okay, so it did move it down a little bit. Um, a, a proper uh, pin punch would knock that uh, through. So anyway, you can see what the goal is. is. You grind the rivet heads off, then you take a punch, whatever or whatever you have for a punch, and, uh, and knock the rivet out, which is what I did with this one a few days ago as an experimentation. So here's the difference in diameter. It's not a lot. In fact, you know, that looks almost exactly the same. But these are called 3 8 head and half inch long, 964 shank. I got them from uh, uh, McMaster Car, and these are hollow only the first eighth of an inch. You know, that's standard rivet rivets for, um, for brakes. So anyway, um, I'm going to show you this one last tool. This is called a Forstner bit. Um, it's 3 8 and it uh, it drills the bottom of the hole is flat so it keeps um, it's a nice flat area for the rivet to sit against so uh, this works really good I drilled that one out the rivet that I put in and reinstalled just to you know see how it feels and uh, this it doesn't pull in at all it's not like a normal bit that'll bite and go in and ruin everything and I did it with a hand drill so it worked extraordinarily well which is what I saw one of the guys on YouTube how he did it um, I'll try to put a link in the description if I don't forget and then uh, you can see what he did he's obviously done a million of them but uh, this Forstner bit is is 3 8 which is supposedly the same size as the head but it comes out just a shade bigger and it worked really good I really like this bit it's got a pin in the center um, so once you drill a hole through the lining It'll self-guide down that uh, little tiny pilot hole that you drill. Anyway, so this is stage one where you grind all these off and then pull the lining off and then, you know, degrease it and decontaminate it and stuff. And then, uh, you know, onward and upward. We'll get to those stages as we get this brake, uh, brake shoes relined. I have to do one side of the tractor, which is two of these pieces. Yes, you can buy them and not have to worry about this, but they're very expensive. Buying all this tooling and rivets and stuff is, I don't even think it's the same cost. It might be the same cost, but then you have enough supplies to do all kinds of shoes over and over and over. Um, the lining material's awfully cheap. I think it was uh, $18 for two feet, which will make, which will make uh, three shoes worth. So. I've got two shoes worth and one mistake, <laughs> which for me is is important. So anyway, I'll uh, I'll show you where we're at after I get this done. This is actually the second shoe, and uh, I've gotten a little more proficient at getting getting these rivets ground down. So, yeah, except I'm not really good at camera work. <laughs>
right, so you guys get the idea. You could drill them. These don't have big holes on the back side for drilling to be easy. Sorry, that's why I choose a Dremel, but uh, we'll be right back. All right, so I got them all ground off, and I'm sacrificing a perfectly good drill bit. Uh, I pounded it through this one-inch square piece of wood, and I put it on top of the rivet and drive the rivet out the other side. So I've done a couple. Um, until my pin punches arrive, this is going to have to do. find it down here in the mess. Uh, yeah, here we go. See? So that's four total I've done. Um, you need something pretty stiff. Drill bits are a bit uh, brittle and obviously smashing the tip of this one isn't going to help it any, but it, uh, it gets it done. Um, the, the tools aren't, uh, aren't coming until tomorrow and I'm just not going to wait. So, <clears throat> it would be easier if this was stuck in the vise, but I don't have as good access to it if it is. See, that one's bouncing off, so let's try this one. You hear how it hits kind of hard and then it starts to slide. So, here we go. There's another one. Anyway, you get the idea. After you grind them off, you knock them through. We'll be right back. Well, there's all the rivets. Um, since the oil seals leaked a bunch of um, gearbox fluid, they're, they're soaked and everything. And here's the results. It came out pretty nice. Then the yep, there we go. And you see all the the wetness. Not good, but uh, you know that can all be decontaminated. So there's the shoes. Their thickness, you know, there's still a lot of um, space above the rivet left, but. Um, Apparently, if you grind these into the drums, the drums are insanely expensive. Insanely expensive. So, yeah, they need to get wiped down, cleaned, blah, blah, blah. And uh, then we'll get to the next stage, which is um, cutting the lining and uh, matching it to length. And also, uh, you can see it's chamfered here. Um, or chamfered, if you pronounce it correctly. So you got to do that so they don't squeal. These are low speed brakes, but you still do it because it's the right idea. So anyway, um, we'll get to the next step here uh, in a little bit.